Hello folks, welcome to the channel. Hope everybody is keeping well. Just off to my local Suzuki dealer in motion to take out their Suzuki V-Strom 800DE. That's a bike I've been trying to take out for the last couple of months, but the weather's been absolutely shocking. But it's a dry day today, the bike is available. So without further ado, sit back, relax, put the kettle on, grab your favorite beverage, and I'll give you my first impressions of the Suzuki V-Strom 800DE. But in the meantime, let's roll the intro. Bosch. Right then, let's take the Suzuki 800DE out for a bit of a ride. Here we go then, this is the Suzuki 800DE. This is gonna set you back 10,999 pounds. So this is actually the first time I've got on the bike, so I'm five foot nine, 32 inch inside leg or seam, whatever you wanna call it. And yeah, so <laughs> it's quite a tall bike. So as you can see here, I'll be sat on the bike in the showroom. And yeah, so five foot nine, I can't quite flat foot it. But yeah, it's all right, it feels comfy. So let's start the bike up. So I've ridden this, this engine uh, several times before in the uh, 800GSX uh, R and S. So click up here to go and have a look at those reviews. Yeah, sounds nice. Yeah, it does sound very nice. I'm moving it around then. Again, moved it around in the showroom before I came out and very easy to move around. So the bike itself weighs 200 and 30 kilograms and the engine that 776cc twin parallel engine puts out uh, 82 horsepower and 78 newton meters so i think what we're going to do is just go around town do a bit of slow riding and then take the bike out into the open road it is a tall bike 855 millimeters on the seat so like i said i've ridden with this engine on a couple of the other bikes so I know the engine pretty well now actually, so I know what to expect. And I'm not sure whether this is in a slightly different tune, as they say. The fuel tank, it's a 20 litre tank. And I think the fuel consumption is 62 miles to the gallon. And that should give you a theoretical range of something in the region of 275 miles until you've got to push it. From a handling point of view then, yeah, it feels feels fine I can't feel the weight I mean I've had a Honda Africa Twin before and I'm currently riding my BMW R 1250 GS so I'm used to the sort of the adventure bikes I'm five foot nine and this fits me nicely actually obviously when you get these bikes you should adjust the position of the handlebars so you get the maximum benefit from correct pos correctly positioned handlebars so obviously these aren't adjusted for me but the riding position is nice the angle of the knees and the legs, yeah, all seems to be good. But if you've got one of these folks, please make any comments in the comment section down below so other potential purchasers of this machine will be able to uh, make a better judgment as to whether they're gonna get this bike or not. I don't think there's self cancelling indicators on here, but that's 776 cc parallel 270, 270 degree crank. Yeah, slow speed work. It's just a very nice engine. And you can feel it sort of that rumble from the engine very nice i do i do like this engine and it's all euro 5 compliant and all that kind of stuff these engines now these sort of middleweight engines are really good really good so do you need anything bigger i don't really know so it sounds good yeah it sounds all right comfort wise it's early days but it feels fairly comfortable on the seat yeah it feels good mirrors are nice nice and large and depending on the camber then whenever you stop then you might give it the old tippy toes so you might you might have a one of those scary moments do you know what i'm not gonna not gonna hang around here so there we go that's all fine so what i think we'll do then i think that's enough of the sl slow speed stuff again easy to use this as a commuting bike you know i know we've got the 21 inch front wheel but yeah absolutely use this as a commuting bike the clutch is just a little bit on-offy, but that might just need a little bit of adjustment. And the brakes, brakes feel nice. I'm not sure if they're radial mounted calipers. 
No, they're not. So the brakes aren't radial. I did read that in a one of the uh, pre-reads for the bike. Yeah, they're they're not uh, radial brakes, which you don't really need on this kind of bike because it's not a sporty bike as such. And suspension-wise, yeah, it's a an off-roady kind of bike, adventure bike. So there is some dive on the suspension. But I think what we'll do is let's uh, get out of town and we can talk about the specs a little bit further. So I think that's enough of the slow speed stuff and sufficient to say nicely balanced at slow speed, clutch, brake and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's all good. It's all nice. It's all nice. At 230 kilos, I think it is the heaviest of the middleweight bikes, but feels nice and neutral. I think they've got dual sport tyres on there. Yeah, it does feel that feels very easy to, to move left and right. Yeah, it's nice. So my initial impressions are it's a very nice bike. Suzuki have done a really nice job with this uh, 800 uh, unit or 776cc unit. It's just, it's got so much go to it. You know, it's not the V engine like the original V Stroms. Um, it's a V Strom uh, in name only, shall we say. But the pull from the engine, it's got a lovely rumble and it's got plenty of character. You've got the bi-directional quick shifter and as I've said before, just seem to be the best way to use it is just put a little bit of pressure on it and then click it up it's effortless and on the way down yeah it just seems to be a little bit better on the way down compared to the uh, 8 oh that I rode uh, yesterday actually so I don't know whether this has done more miles I'm not sure but yeah very comfortable place to be it feels like it just it's one of those kind of bikes you just jump on it and it and it fits you so like all these middle weights, you've just got to, if you're in the middle weight market, you've just got to go out and try all the bikes and see which one you like, what can you afford, does it fit you, and are you happy to have it, you know. And being realistic, I'd say most people, myself included, we like the style of the adventure bikes, but we're the only off-roading we're going to do is a little bit of gravel, if we're being honest. So this 800DE, uh, DE if you didn't know stands for Jewel Explorer and they obviously have the road bias version out and that's called the RE so that's the road explorer that one came out several months ago I believe but this one then is the more off-roady kind of bike you've got a 21 inch front wheel and a 17 inch rear wheel and you've got fully adjustable suspension both front and rear because uh, obviously you want to go off-road so you want to have a bit more control on the suspension but handling wise yeah folks this is really nice are oh, they waving me through thank you there's a whole host of accessories that you can put on the bike um, there's a couple of them up here so you can go and spend a load more money if you so wish and the bike does come with a three-year warranty and you get one year's RAC breakdown recovery. Flavours wise it will come in three flavours and I will show you what those flavours are now. Start of the show though is undoubtedly this 776cc engine. It's got plenty of torque to it. You know it just wants to go. Really is very impressive. Very nice red line, apparently 9,500 uh, RPM. But yeah, these bikes are all damn good. So where does the Suzuki fit then? So there is a, a big market out there. Well, I'm no off riding, off road riding guru. I could do the gravel stuff. Um, where does this sit? Well, I think at one end you've got the the Honda for the on road stuff. And then off-road, I don't know, is it the Aprilia, is it the, the Yamaha? So maybe this sort of sits sits in the middle somewhere. Uh, but for a bike that sits in the middle, it's really, really good. It really is good. Very, very flickable. Sounds good. Got a bit of a uh, roar to it. It's just, a, it's just a bloody good bike. It really is. You know, chuck it in. box with a quick shifter it's all good and down again yeah yeah really nice 
so this is my level of off-roading folks this is it this is this is this is what I call off-roading for me you know just don't go over the edge there basically but it feels really nice yeah nicely balanced on the clutch throttle yeah stand still yeah it's good yeah it's really nice really good like it like it yeah nicely balanced and I'm I am no off-roader folks but it feels good <laughs> it feels good nice backdrop over there yeah it's good yeah depending on where you are you know five foot nine with that eight five five millimeter seat you do go on tippy toes depending on what uh, what the surface is uh, beneath you so anyway let's uh, turn the bike off pop the side stand down fairly easy to reach and there we go hope that's gonna fall over and there we go so this is Suzuki's V-Strom so let's just have a very quick look at it then so starting from the front go to the back very quickly so we've got the 21 inch wheel at the front and that is a tube tire and then we've got the fully adjustable shower upside down inverted forks and we've got LED lights all the way around on this bike so you've got LED lights you can get a taller one from the accessories that is adjustable but you just have to use take the screws out and then move it up or down you've got three holes in there to uh, put the screen higher but it's a smaller screen just to let you get a better view whilst you're going off road of the rocks and those kind of things brakes wise then we've got the Nissan calipers at the front and the rear and you'll notice that these aren't radial mounted as we mentioned before in the video they are mounted as per the old school but i guess you don't need radial mounted bike brakes for an adventure bike so under here then we've got a radiator protector guard and the sump protector down here is plastic but you can get a metal one we've got the rather beautiful 776 cc parallel twin with twin balancers making it nice and smooth but it gives you that little bit of a character that bit of a rumble to the bike very nice foot pegs then got uh, rubber inserts and you can take those out if you'll need to do some serious off-roading we've got the steel tubular chassis and then the rear subframe is removable in case you bend it and then the rather chunky exhaust on the back and just moving up to the bike then come standard with the hand guards nice mirrors actually and then moving around we've got the usb socket down here and then just some very nice switch gear folks very nice very easy to use we'll talk about their modes uh, very shortly and yeah just a simple key in the ignition no fancy electronic stuff uh, for the ignition and for the uh, fuel tank so very nice switch gear good mirrors uh, that nice five inch tft a nice sculptured tank 20 liters comfortable seat at the moment nice and comfortable we'll take the seat off if we can so let's have a look so under the seat then what have we got so we have got the battery i think the air box is under here somewhere as well a little bit of a toolkit and then some storage down here so yeah that is under the seat and should be pretty easy to pop it back on is there any toolkit there a uh, carry on here so i think you can put something on there your bag or whatever and I believe you can get some accessories to some other luggage to fit on there uh, as well. So overall, oh yes, and we've got the quick shifter uh, down here as well. The bi-directional quick shifter. What's it folks, that was just a general overview of this rather splendid Suzuki 800DE. If you've got one of these, please make any comments in the comments section down below. So I'm back on the bike, fire this beautiful engine up. Yeah, I'm going to do that again because it's got... All you need to do is just press the button once there we go it's got the quick start system I keep forgetting that so let's get out of here so tire wise then i didn't mention the tires it's got those sort of off-roady kind of tires so really the only thing we haven't touched upon is all the electronic stuff that this bike has so as an umbrella covering that's called sir suzuki's intelligent ride system i know quite a little bit about this so Basically, I'm going to put something up here if I can and it will tell you what SERS is but it is an umbrella term and it covers it, all things to do electronic with Suzuki 
So that would cover the uh, ABS. So you've got uh, several modes of ABS. In fact, you've got three modes of ABS. Let's talk about those. You've got one, two, and then you can actually switch the ABS off. So you can actually switch the ABS off, but I would suspect that's only for uh, off-road use, as we say. Then traction control, we have got three levels, in fact, four levels of traction control. We've got one, two, three, gravel, which is, uh, again, for off-road use. So you've got gravel, and then you've got the uh, off uh, as well. And then riding modes, it's three uh, modes of riding. So we've got A, B, C, and that's it. So three riding modes, uh, A for active, which is uh, the power mode, B for basic mode, which is your road mode, and then C for custom mode, which is going to be, uh, in effect, your, your rain mode, isn't it? But I'm going to leave that in uh, mode A. So, tracks control, one, two, three. Yeah, tracks control, three levels, and there they go. Fourth one, tracks control is off. Let's get rid of that. So, let's turn that back on. So, very easy to use. So, that's all part of the SIR system, the tracks control. Uh, the power modes for the ECU on the engine and then the ABS modes uh, as well. Uh, the quick shifter uh, up and down, that's all part of the package. And then what I say, you've got the electronic throttle, you've got the uh, quick easy start. So all you need to do, as we just demonstrated back there, just press the button, you don't have to keep your finger on it and then that will start it automatically for you. And then you've got, uh, you've got Suzuki's I can't remember what they call it. It's like an anti-stall system, so it detects what the revs are doing as you let the clutch out, and if you need a bit more revs, it will do that automatically to try and not try to get you not to stall the bike. So I think that is pretty much all the SIRS systems uh, on the bike, I think. And then you've got the electronic ride by wire throttle thing. So any negatives on the bike? Well there's a there's a couple actually so the big one that i will mention and i've already touched on it as we did the walk around is the tires so they are tubed tires so i think tube tires there's those of us that have had punctures those of us that will never get punctures and those of us that are going to get punctures at some stage so folks you know it might not be a something you're going to think about but I'm just going to raise it I had an Africa twin and I actually bought all the tire changing stuff and it is a bit of an acre of ballness to actually change a tube on the road but it, that's only if you you want to protect your lovely gold rims as I did in, with my Africa twin so I think the same would apply here if you if you don't want to damage those rims then you're going to have to be very careful when you change your tubed tire um, and if you don't really give a damn then yeah just just crack on and, and attack it and, and away you go and obviously as standard the bike doesn't come with a center stand and if it if a center oh cheers mate if a center stand is an optional extra then I'll put it on here because if you've got a center stand that will make things a damn sight easier but yeah is that something you should be aware of I certainly wouldn't want to change a, a tube at midnight in the rains on some motorway in France with the wife on the back moaning at me saying why'd you get a bike with tubed tyres but it might not bother you but I sort of just throw it out there anyway I'm not sure whether or not with your one year RAC cover whether they would cover a replace coming out to replace a tube for you I'm not sure so please folks put a comment in the comment section down below if that has happened to you another thing uh, I do have a bit of an issue with really uh, is the fact that you can go miles on this bike and it would be really nice to have cruise control on the bike but come on Suzuki it's not even a, an optional extra it would be really nice if you fitted that because I think you go miles on this bike folks they're the only moans I can have about the bike it's just it's a good bike it really is a good machine if you're on the in the UK 70 miles an hour on the motorway then you get a little bit of buffet from the screen because it is the smaller screen but uh, yeah I've got my adventure helmet on and I think you'll be fine with that but uh, you might want to go with the uh, accessory screen the optional extra extra screen a little bit higher and that uh, may give you a bit more wind protection depending on how tall you are what kind of screen you need yeah these middle weights are really good I think there's some roadworks around here yeah these middleweight bikes are very very good and with this 21 inch wheel it just handles very well a little bit of dive obviously with this 
fully adjustable show of suspension but it's so tractable it really is you know really is very tractable you know 230 kilos doesn't feel like 230 kilos at all just just goes really well quick shifter nice and smooth I think what we'll do folks just before we take the bike back is we'll play around with this electronic wizardry stuff and do a little bit of off-roading I think oh there we go so I've managed to switch the ABS off so the rear ABS is off and we are in oh there we go it's gravel mode so it's one of the traction controls so I have no idea what this is going to do so let's go anyway slide the back yep Yep, <laughs> had a bit of fun with it. And that, folks, is the level of my off-road ability. <laughs> it's not very good. I'm going to take it back because I'm going to have too much fun on this and I don't want to drop it, basically. And that, folks, concludes the off-road sections. Okay, folks, so summing up what are my thoughts on this Suzuki's V-Strom 800DE. Well, I've been out on the bike now for about three hours or so really enjoyed my time on it so if I was going to sum this bike up I think it is a bike which you can have a tremendous amount of fun on and go to lots of places it is very comfortable in the three hours that I've been riding it I'm five foot nine seat feels good the leg position's fine there's no aches and pains there like the width of the handlebars it's just a very nice place to be so with that 20 litre tank 270 miles potential range I think you can go a long way on it so I'm no adventure rider gravel as you saw back there is about my limit but yeah you can have lots of fun on this bike uh, you could go touring on it you could go commuting on it uh, absolutely no problems whatsoever that's wheeling up the hill well done mate so it's a really nice machine handles very well suspension is soft but then it's it's designed to be going off-road with that bigger more travel show a suspension unit both front and rear so it's just a yeah it's just a nice nice bike tips in really well brakes fine although you haven't got the radial mounted front brakes but the brakes are more than adequate for what this bike needs dips a little bit when you apply the brakes but it is it's not set up for me so obviously it's a fully adjustable suspension bike so you can adjust that to set up the uh, the preload and the dive whatever to your heart's content go and play with that but this is just set up uh, from the showroom actually that engine is without doubt the star of the show it's really nice uh, I've ridden this in a variety of chassis now and it just never ceases to uh, bring a smile to my face from that uh, I think this is 82 horsepower 776 cc engine it just pulls from low down effortlessly nice and smooth but it's got a little bit of a rumble to it a little bit of character it's just very nice and then about five and a half thousand revs it then uh, picks its skirt up and then whoosh, off it goes very nice not sure what the top speed of this is but it's it's not relevant at all really is it 70 miles now on the motorway yeah not going to be a problem you might need to change the screen possibly depending on what kind of helmet you're wearing and how tall you are but it's a very nice nicely balanced bike and at 230 kilos which i think is is the heaviest in the middleweight adventure kind of group but it's it just handles really well there we go slow speed handling on the front brake rear brake very nice it really is nice it's a shame it hasn't got cruise control but maybe they can think about that in the future and also it would be nice because i like the adventure style bikes as do a lot of people but they might not like to be riding you know hardcore off-road so would they need the tubed tires the answer to that has got to be no so maybe suzuki will listen to uh, any customer feedback um, and change the design of the wheels but maybe that's something you can do yourself is see what aftermarket tubes tubeless tires or wheels are out there and then pop them on the bike so if you've done that put some comments in the comments section down below and uh, I'll highlight that in the description as well if uh, that has been done successfully uh, and is cost effective. Mirrors are good, yeah, TFT's nice, that's it. 
I can't say any more than that. So that was the pros and some of the cons. I'm glad it's not my decision to make if I'm in the market for a middleweight kind of adventure bike. What's it folks, shortly arriving back at InMotion. Thanks so much for Danny and the team for allowing me to take this beast from 800 de out so go down to in motion try it out or your local suzuki dealer it is a very nice bit of kit if you're five foot nine you should have no problems with it uh, just be wary of what ground you're stopping on and you if you're low if you're shorter or taller then obviously you can get the lower seat or the higher seat as well to get the best position you can for yourself that's it guys hope you enjoyed the video make any comments in the comment section down below ride safe and we'll see you again soon in the not too distant future. That has been the 800DE V-Strom. Nice bike. Cheerio.